entire library. Yes, yes. Eight thousand volumes. In this scroll. Yes. That scroll in thy hands there. It's not very big. Volumes on law, philosophy, theosophy, kairosophy, astrology, and alchemy, positivism, altruism, divination, and hypnotism, the reading of minds, the transmigration of souls, the art of flying. Hey! Listen here. I've heard just about enough from you. Keep your voice down and your superstitions to yourself. Who said that? Are you talking to me? I have often seen it darkly hinted at that far back in remote ages there existed a race of beings with short arms and tiny hands. Ah, have you now? They invented a written language of dots and strokes. The Umiloba, man hoppers, yes. All thy years, thou hast not heard such marvelous tales of travel and adventure as I could tell thee now. I, too, am a man of varied attainments. But I'd wager that in all thy life thou hast not fell on such wisdom as is contained within this volume of antiquity as I have here. What is the seal there? I do not recognize the markings. For six thousand years it lay buried neath the slopes of Ararat. Six thousand years? I have only unrolled it far enough to decipher the nature of its contents. It treats of the human soul. The human soul? It portends to have solved a mystery which has baffled philosophers of all ages. What mystery? It claims the essence which we call soul may be taken out of a body and put into a bottle, or even another man's body to keep his own soul company. Hmm. Go on. And in this manner, the whole world may be reformed. Good luck finding that many good souls. Good one. You smile, but it seems to me quite feasible. The good soul would continually betray its bad companion. By thrusting the soul of a spendthrift into the body of a miser, his inclination to hoard money and starve his family would forever be opposed by an ardent desire to waste his earnings. Name your price. No cost is out of the question, no matter how high. For you see, I am a very rich boy. You misunderstand me. I would never peddle the keys to the wisdom of all ages for any amount of money, no matter how large. Sure about that? I will give it to you if thou wilt promise me this. In case I am right in my understanding of its contents, you will impart the secrets that it has to teach to the fathers of the church, that they too may learn of its mysteries. We promise. If it's what you say, of course. Of course. But, sir, it is not our custom to accept so valuable a present without making some return, therefore. Uh, here. Take this... this ring. Oh. It contains the petrified eye of a basilisk, which, in the dark, emits light enough to read the hour on a watch dial. Please, I insist. I thank thee most heartily. <laughs> Put her there. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, pleasure doing business with you. Oh. Huh? Your head. Head? Herb. Are you, uh... What? No. Hmm? It's not... Uh, Did you say... Uh, head... Uh, about a head taller than... Yes. It should be... Uh, I mean, uh, pleasure doing business with you. Thanks. Same. Now, if you'll excuse us, we must be off. 
Come along, Bulger. All right. Uh, but, but wait, young master. You still have not told me your name. Oh, I suppose you're right. My four-footed brother here is called Bulger. Oh, hello. And I am none other than the world-famous Wilhelm Heinrich Sebastian von Trump. Sebastian Bonn. But you may call me Little Baron Trump. Hello and welcome to the Little Baron Trump and his wonderful dog Bulger's marvelous underground adventure radio hour. Adapted from the novels of American lawyer and literateur Ingersoll Lockwood. Written in the 1890s, the Little Baron Trump novels tell the story of a brilliant and exceedingly wealthy young man from Germany, who, along with his wonderful dog Bulger, follow the words of the master of masters, Don Fum, to discover the portal to the interior of our world. Tonight's episode The World Within a World. Doomed to waste the splendid gifts with which nature has endowed me, shut within the walls of this castle? My darling son, I cannot allow it. You've barely been home a month from your last adventures. Mother, thou hast said thyself that I am no ordinary child to be amused with ball and top or entertained with picture books. Sebastian, is that any way to speak to the authors of thy life? But father... Sebastian, please. Who knows what dangers you've escaped on this last journey? I won't spend another sleepless night wondering what ocean you're sailing on this time, and if you're getting enough to eat. It is thy mother's will, son. Put aside your travels and return to your studies. Yes. For a little while. Ooh, sorry. Uh, and that's that. Uh, good night, my son. Good night, Sebastian. We love you. No. Well, I am just beside myself. No. I can't stay walled up in this petty town. He wishes me to be a child, does he? I'll be one then, and set about making friends with every mischievous little rogue and juvenile ne'er-do-well in town. The more rampant and tireless their power of mischief, the closer I'll wrap them in my affections. They'll worship me as their leader and yield an implicit obedience to my commands as were I possessed of some mastery over them. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yes, Vulger? Remember the role? The what? What ancient scroll? Bulger! Now wait just a moment. I'm coming, I'm coming. There, it's open. What do you... Bulger, we can unpack our trunks later. Why... The room! Ah, yes, of course. The ancient scroll. The ancient scroll from our Armenian friend in Constantinople. (sighs) (coughs) A very musty, dry, and cracked parchment it is. Indeed. I don't know. We'll have to open it. The language appears to be... Hmm, perhaps... Let me see, Greco? No, no. Early Sanskrit? No, no. Uh, Ancient Greek? Yep. I've done it! Bulger! 
soldier, my steadfast friend, I've done it. After several hours' close inspection, imagine my delight to discover that this ancient volume here was actually a palimpsest. What? A palimpsest? A manuscript which has been used for multiple inscriptions, where one writing covers another, older writing beneath it. You see, Bulger, upon first examination of the scroll, I felt instinctively that this dissertation upon the nature of the soul was merely some sick man's dream. Our merchant must have been some poor dweller in the double darkness of ignorance and superstition. <laughs> but underneath this mad ranting, I could see the faint remnants of an older writing in an even more ancient script. <laughs> I made haste to wash away those fervid outpourings by a plentiful use of soap and hot water. The writing that remained was dim and shadowy, but I did not let that trouble me, Bulge, skilled as I am at the chemist's art. Yeah. I lost no time in applying an acid, which restored the writing to its old-time blackness in no time. Yeah. Yeah. I now got at the real contents of this most venerable vellum, dating 45 years before our common era. I had some difficulty in deciphering the language. With the aid of a few score of dictionaries, I finally rendered it into the modern tongue, passing it first through the Aramaic, thence into Greek, and then cleverly... <laughs> Bulger, sitting before you now is a manuscript from the pen of none other than the celebrated thinker and philosopher, the learned Don Constantino von Bartolomeo Strepilovich Guinarius Fum. <laughs> commonly known among scholars as Don Fum. Don Fum. In this work, Don Fum advances a wonderful theory that there is every reason to believe the interior of our world is inhabited. He writes here, As you well, well know, know, this vast earth ball of ours is not Solid. On the contrary, being in many places quite hollow. Ages and ages ago, terrible disturbances had taken place on the Earth's surface. And drove its inhabitants to seek refuge in vast underground chambers. So vast, in fact, as to merit the name the world within, world, a, world world within, within a world. A world. Yes, Bulger, I too am weary of this dull and spiritless existence. We must break away from this life of reverie and inaction. Let us be up and away to once again bring honor to my great parentage so that every ear might hear the name Trump. <laughs> <sighs> what? Who is it? My son, thou didst call for me. May I enter? Thou hast that right. Peace, good Bulger. Welcome, honored father. Come in. <clears throat> father, it is my intention to set out in search of Don Fum's world within a world. Don who? I have read his claims and deduced that learned Don Fum must be right. Surely such a world ought to exist, right beneath our very feet. I don't understand. It is my intention to set out in search of its portal with all safe haste as soon now, as... Now, Sebastian, thy mother. As soon as I have thine and mother's consent, when she is able to bring her heart to part with me. Okay? My son... You know thy gracious mother, the Baroness, shall never, uh, never let... What, uh, what is this, my son, this curious scroll here on thy writing desk? That, father, is Don Thumb's world within a world, as I have just said. A world within a... Well, rather, a book about the world within a world. Father? Brother? Why... These musty, mildewed pages, they seem to... to... What is it, Father? Such curious letters. They seem to... I think I'd quite like to forget this surface world 
and plummet into its depths with nothing but my thoughts sounding its subterranean chambers, gazing upon and listening to the dwellers therein. My feelings exactly, father. <laughs> <clears throat> Little Baron, much as thy mother and I shall dread to think of our son so far from the safe protection of his family's venerable roof again, whose moss-grown tiles have sheltered thee for... Yes, get to it, father. Your mother and I must not be selfish in this matter. The honor of our family, thy fame as an explorer of strange lands and faraway corners of the globe, call unto us to be strong-hearted. Therefore, my dear boy... Yes, father, yes? Go! Make ready and go forth once more in search of new marvels. Thank you, Father, thank you. With learned Don Fung's charts to stand me by like a safe and trusty counselor, no danger shall imperil my life. Yes, Bulger, nor with thy unerring instinct to guide him when his keen intellect should fail. Mother, you were listening? Oh, uh, wife, I... Please. My dear son, it should never be said that Gertrude Baroness von Trump stood in the way of her son adding new glories to the family scutcheon. Go, go, little Baron, and heaven bring thee safely home to our arms and our hearts in its own good time. But while thou art gone, remember thy parents' lessons well. Yes, father. It behooves thee to feed thy mind lest thy development be checked. Yes, mother. Do not cut thy fingernails too short. Don't walk too fast, else thy sides cramp. Don't laugh with food in thy mouth. Never eat meat without pepper. Never eat vegetables without salt. Don't exert thyself after a heavy Never meal. attempt to stop a Don't sneeze. Don't stand on thy leg when it has fallen Don't pick sleep. thy teeth Don't with examine thy Don't nose without a looking a glass. Do not wear thy underclothing longer than one teeth. week. Cut thy hair on every new moon. Do not swallow thy food Don't without chewing. Don't pick thy teeth. Don't Stand on thy legs. Never fail to take a pill if thou sees flashes in the dark. <sighs> but remember most of all the motto of the Trumps, per ardua ad astra. The pathway to glory is strewn with pitfalls and dangers. Now go, little baron. Seek the wonderful and the marvelous. Now go, little baron. Make ready. Make ready. <laughs> little baron is making ready to leave home. Little baron is making ready to leave. 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 Stop it! 
Yes, Bulger, I know. You've been at our wagoner's throat since his conscription. You got bulged. I did not pay too much. We dealt fairly like gentlemen. Come now, Bulge. I know these goodly teamsters. <laughs> well, we already shook on it. Now, if you wouldn't mind. Little Baron! Little Baron! <sighs> he does enjoy breaking in upon an important train of thought, doesn't he? Little Baron! Oh, heavens. What is it, Yvonne? Little Baron, we are very near where I must part with thee. I covered the last mile of the hundred today. If thou wouldst go any farther north, thou must hire thee another wagoner. You hear? Shush. Now see here, Yvonne. We are not at all near our destination. I will double pay thee upon our arrival. Now I have no desire to bargain with thee further. But little Baron, listen to reason. My people will expect me back. I promised my father. Nay, Yvonne. Curb thy tongue lest it harm thy soul. What? What are you doing? The Bulger, we don't even know where we're going. You go, go. Little Baron! Now, see here, Yvonne. I spoke with thy father. And he promised me that... Thou shouldst go a second hundred miles with me, if need be. He never! He did? He did, at double pay. Now, it shall be... Plus a few kron or more from my Golubchika. Your Golubchika? Ah, it is anniversary. She was looking forward to it. Nice! Shush! Fine, and a few kron or more for thy... Golub Chica. Eighty kroner! Now see here, Yvonne. I know no such word as cruelty, but fate has made me rich and thou poor. Thou art born to serve, and I to command. Yeah. Shush. Do thou thy duty, and thou wilt find me just and considerate. Thou art a hard master, little baron. If the whim took thee, thou wouldst bid me leap into the giant's well just to see whether it has a bottom or not. Giant's well? Yeah! You're stumped. What's going on, Yvonne? The road is steep. I must tighten the horse's shoes, then... But Yvonne, thy horses will go lame with chill in this war. If they catch cold, it could mean a week's delay. Hey, hey! Look at the handsome little Mazuchnik. Little man all head. Oh. Darest thou exercise thy dull wit on thy master? I'll have thee whipped by the village constable! Look at his eyes! How they shine in the dark! Oh no! The little dandy and his demon on four legs will throw me down the giant well! Save me! Save me, brother! Save me! Now see here, Yvonne! Merry Uncle will never see me again! Never save me! I'm beginning to sense treachery and rebellion about this boorish fellow. No, you don't think. I agree, this is indeed a mountainous climb, and the journey may require many a slow and tedious, yet needful <laughs> path. But what matter it how many or great the difficulties to a man who has made up his mind? Do the geese stop to count the miles from home when it's time to turn southward? Do the ants stop to count how many grains of sand they move to burrow deep enough to escape the winter's frost? No. There have been many trumps, but never one that has thrown up his arms and cried, I surrender! Should I be the first? Never! Even if it means never seeing dear old Castle Trump again! <laughs> Ha 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 ha! 
Oh, Bulger, my brain is restless. It pulses in its overabundance of strength. <laughs> Pounding like an imprisoned inventor knocking on his cell door. Pleading to be let out into daylight with his plans and schemes. Hello, Bulger. Thank goodness I possess the power of falling asleep almost at will, or else I'd go absolutely mad. Mm -hmm. Keep a watchful eye on our driver, Bulger. Mm -hmm. I know it's thy practice never to sleep a wink when danger may be near me, like an anxious mother over her babe. Yeah, yeah. And now, by the power of mere thought, I shall summon sweet slumber, sweet forgetfulness. That good angel, so obedient to my command. Sleep! I order thee to... Two. Ah, at last, the sweet serenity and stillness of the vast corridors of my mind. Just in time, my brain was positively spinning with... Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting company. How did you get in here? I see. Thou art an adept of some clandestine brotherhood with news from the East. No, that's not it. Or be thou some poorly departed wretch lost to roam in temporal fields of purgatorial elusis, and in thy wanderings has happened upon my humble celestial sanctuary? Apologies, my incorporeal friend. Pay them no mind. I am lord of this hall, and, seeing no look of danger about thee, I will permit thee to stay. So long as you don't touch anything, or think too loudly. That goes for you all as well! You are standing in what I call the Great Baronial Hall. Here I keep vast stores of learning and knowledge acquired during my many travels through faraway lands. I'm sure you're well acquainted with my various tales of adventures, and you aren't. Well, let me tell you, I enjoy a worldwide fame. Visitors flock by the thousands to see the extraordinary treasures and curiosities on display at Castle Trump, and of course, to... Yes, Castle Trump. What is so... Do you even know who I am? I am Wilhelm Heinrich Sebastian von Trump. But you may call me... Little Baron Um, yes. Little Baron Trump. Scion of Germany's most illustrious pedigree. Heir to towering Castle Trump. It's many lands, and of course, son to none other than... Am I going too fast? Forgive me. My brain, you see, is a very active one. My memory, too, is near perfect. I can easily recall any fact or figure, and solve any problem almost instantly, simply by returning here, to the great baronial hall. Here. 
perhaps something of my story, life, and career. Oh. Oh. There we are. Now let's see. Here. <clears throat> From my entrance into this world, something told me that I should be a famous child. I was born in Africa. That was a terrible night for the great city of New York. Keep within your houses. Mobs pushed police northward. Our day has come at last. Give us back the money you have around all of us. Give us back. The entire east side is in a state of uproar. Vast mobs of anarchists and socialists threaten to plunder and despoil the houses of the rich. The hotel on Fifth Avenue would be the first to feel the fury of the mob. Down with the oppressor! Death to the rich man! The troops were there in time to save. This has been. The Little Baron Trump and his wonderful dog, Bulger's Marvelous Underground Adventure Radio Hour. The Little Baron Radio Hour was recorded on the campus of Northern Illinois University by the NIU radio players Charlotte Whiteley, Ryan Sero young Jonathan McLawhorn, Ryan Wyrebeck, Paige Larkowski, and introducing Lulu Gray as the Little Baron Trump. Also featuring the vocal talents of Jamak Newberry, Ua Smith, Andrea Shapiro, Miles Muhammad, and Jack Gordon. The Little Baron Radio Hour may not be suitable for children of all ages or eras. Any likenesses to persons living or dead is purely and absolutely coincidental. Join us next time on...